In today's video, I'm making three family meals that cost in the $5 to $6 range. I'll also give you some tips on how to make them cheaper in case you need to trim the budget even further. For inspiration this week, I headed to Trader Joe's. It's definitely one of my favorite stores and I always get so much inspiration while I'm shopping there. I was thinking about doing an egg dish, but their prices of eggs were much higher than Walmart, so I think I'll make that dish another week. I was checking out all the salads and I spotted this lemon basil pasta salad. It sounds like a delicious summer combination and it's perfect for the heat. They were selling this one for $5 for an individual serving size, so I thought I would try to make this for less. There's a TikTok pasta recipe that I'm excited to try and it calls for olives. I picked up this individual size packet of manzanillas for 99 cents but I also picked up a jar of olives. Some items at Trader Joe's are cheaper than Walmart, like these lemons that were 49 cents. They also had garlic for 49 cents each, so I'm gonna grab one of those, and I love Trader Joe's pasta. It's imported from Italy, and most of the varieties are only 99 cents each. I purchased one spaghetti, one linguine, and one farfalle for $1.29, which is slightly more than the one they have at Walmart. For my first recipe, I'm making the TikTok trend of dirty martini pasta. It calls for a splash of either gin or vodka, but I'm going to be omitting that from this recipe. I'm going to be using spaghetti, but you can use linguine or angel hair pasta if you like. I'll be using these manzanilla olives that I picked up at Trader Joe's for $2.23. A lemon, some garlic, and some olive oil. Now, if you wanted to use one of those small packs that I also picked up for 99 cents, you could do that, but we are going to be using a little bit of the olive brine in the pasta. So that's why I went ahead and just decided to get a bottle. I believe that this recipe originated from Rachel Ray. She did a version of this pasta with shrimp, and the TikToker didn't use shrimp and instead added blue cheese to hers. So I'm definitely excited to try this because I do love olives, and I think that the mix of blue cheese and olives might be very nice together. The recipe called for Castle Vetrano olives, which are a buttery olive from Sicily, but I'm substituting the much less expensive Manzanilla olives, which are also very mild. These are the most popular green olives that are sold in stores, and I think that's because the variety is so prolific and easy to grow. They're also grown here in California, and I think that these will work fine in our recipe. If you don't like olives, you could always substitute for capers. This recipe calls for larger curls of zest, but I don't have a zester, so I'm just gonna use this grater for now. I just ordered one from Amazon, but it's not here yet. I ordered the zester because I do love using a lot of lemon in the summer months, so I think it's definitely gonna come in handy for lots of dishes. And because this recipe calls for you to use some of the brine of the olives, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these olives. I'm just worried about the dish being a little bit too salty. I lifted my pan up from the heat because I don't want my garlic to overcook and I've never fried lemon zest before. The lemon zest cooked very quickly. I think if I cook this again, I'll put the lemon zest in last. In Rachel Ray's version, she didn't cook the lemon zest in the pan at all. Instead, she used lemon juice. My pasta was almost finished cooking when I grabbed some pasta water. So it has lots of starch in there and that's gonna help the sauce cling to my spaghetti noodles.
I would say that this is a very beautiful dish of pasta. I'm going to try this before I add the blue cheese. Wow, this is really good. It's not as salty as I thought it was going to be, so I think I could have gotten away without draining the olives. I would be okay eating it just like this without anything else. You could also add a sweet element with some roasted tomatoes or sun-dried tomatoes. I think that would be a nice compliment to the olives. I'll have some tips for you on how to cut costs on this in the description area of my video. Okay, let's try it now with the blue cheese. I already had this blue cheese in my fridge, but I was shocked when I saw how much the regular price of this varied among stores. I found it as cheap as $1.99 and as much as $3.49, and those were regular prices, not sale prices. I love the blue cheese in this. There's something magical that happens when you combine olives with blue cheese. It's such a delicious combination and it's something I've never had before. This is one of those kind of meals that at night when you find that you can't sleep and then you start thinking about a meal that you want, you start craving it. This is that meal that I would want to get up and get in the kitchen and make a nice big bowl for myself. That's how delicious this is. Now, if you don't like blue cheese, obviously you're not going to like this. Maybe you could try this with feta instead, but you definitely want to watch the salt if you do that. I don't know, feta to me tastes saltier than blue cheese. I've already made this again, and the second time I made it using garlic powder instead of garlic, and it turned out great that way as well. I can see why this recipe was so popular. I'll definitely be eating this again. My next recipe is a super simple $5 Italian sandwich that my sons both love. I pick up this ciabatta bread at Trader Joe's. It's the kind of bread that needs to be cooked, so I cook it in my toaster oven at 400 degrees for about 7 minutes until it starts to brown on top. This bread has a very chewy texture, so I like to make vegetarian sandwiches with this as well. It's $5.28 for all of these items. However, I do get two sandwiches out of this. I get this Genoa salami and provolone cheese for $3.99 at Trader Joe's. So I usually just pick that up for my sons when I'm there. And this is half of the sandwich uh, after I've browned it. And then I just layer it together with four pieces of provolone and four pieces of the salami. Sometimes I'll put romaine lettuce in there if I have it. Sometimes one of my sons wants to take a little bit of Italian dressing, but today he took it for his lunch with just a little mayonnaise on the side. This would be nice to take for a picnic or a day at the beach or at the lake. You could take this along with some pasta salad on the side and maybe some fruit. That would be nice. If you purchase these items at Walmart, you should be able to feed four people, so that's another option for you. My son loved the next salad that I'm going to show you, and that's the lemon basil pasta salad. This is the one that was inspired by the salad I saw at Trader Joe's. Lemon and basil go so well together, and there's no fresher taste for summer. I originally wanted to make this a less expensive meal, but after I made this, I realized it really does need some Parmesan cheese, so I added that onto the budget. So with the cheese, this will cost about $5.94. And for this recipe, you'll need your pantry staples of oil, vinegar, and pepper. I'm going to use my seasoned rice vinegar, and by seasoned, it just means that it has a little bit of salt added. Sometimes seasoned rice vinegar has sugar in it also, but mine doesn't. I found another popular lemon basil pasta salad online, and it called for white wine vinegar, which I don't have. The Trader Joe's pasta salad had a mix of red wine and balsamic vinegar, which was probably a white balsamic. Anyway, pretty much any vinegar is going to work here, so just use whatever you have. Also, lots of different types of pasta could be used. I had a garden rotini and also some shells that I thought would have worked here. And I also think I had some orzo in the cabinet that would have been nice. I'll cook my pasta in heavily salted water and I'm going to cook it until just al dente. While that's cooking, I'm going to make my dressing. And for that, I'm going to use a fourth of a cup of olive oil. This is just a regular olive oil that has a mild flavor that I purchased in the big 3 liter jugs at Sam's Club and then I use that to fill this Trader Joe's bottle. I've kept this because it has a nice dispenser at the end. I'm going to add the juice of one lemon which is going to be about 3 tablespoons of lemon juice. I remember when I first started doing my channel, some of my viewers told me that I was using 
this lemon squeezer wrong, which I thought was so funny, but even now that I know how to use it, I end up using it both ways. First, I'll start with a lemon in one direction, and then I turn it over, and I end up getting more juice out. So I actually don't think it really matters how you put the lemon in if you're using it both ways. Otherwise, you're leaving a little lemon juice in the lemon. If you have a sunny area in your home, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck if you buy a little basil plant and then just use it during the summer for your clippings. I found one at Walmart that was only slightly higher than how much I paid for my basil. I'm going to chiffonade my basil and I'm going to use a generous amount of leaves for this. Basically, you just stack all of the leaves together and roll them up into a tight bundle and then cut some very thin strips. These are some huge leaves, so I'm also going to need to cross cut a few times so that I don't have large chunks. I rinsed my pasta in cold water to make sure that it stopped cooking and then I let it dry out. It's always a good idea to try a little bit of the pasta first before you pour your dressing over everything just to make sure that you like it and that's what I was doing here. I thought the flavor was fresh and good but it did need something else so I added some shredded parmesan that I had from Walmart and that was really good. I also found these pine nuts that were quite old but still good that I needed to use up. I think this was the one and only time I've ever purchased pine nuts because they are definitely an expensive nut, but you can substitute a different one here or omit them all together. I just thought it would be great to try to use those up. And I also added a generous amount of pepper and the rest of this shredded parmesan that I had from another video that I did. I only had about a fourth of the bag left over, but it did turn out perfect, so if you have to buy the shredded parmesan, you'll have quite a bit left over, and obviously this would be great with a really nice parmigiano reggiano if you have it. You could add in a shaved parmesan. There's so many different options that you could do here. My son loved this so much that he's already taken this twice for his lunch now. He said that this has a very delicate flavor and I do have to agree. So this would be great served with some salmon or maybe some fish or tuna or even just some grilled chicken breast. When I plated this, I served it with a small wedge of lemon and some basil leaves just to dress it up a bit and I thought it looked so pretty. It's such a light and refreshing salad. It's another one of those dishes that would be great to take to a potluck or a summer event where you're wanting something cold to beat the summer heat. I want you to know that I am so grateful for all of my supporters who are helping to make this channel possible. That's it guys, I hope you like this one. I'll put a couple more videos up that I think you might like to watch after this one. Thanks so much for spending time with me, and I'll see you next week.